Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 27. So we're going to have a little bit of fun in this episode and we're going to look at creating a headshot specifically for our zombie and we'll also create a cutscene, something which is vital to gaming and um, well, pretty much every game has a cutscene these days. So let's get started with the headshot. Now the way this works is when we fire our gun to shoot we send out a message to another script to say take off so much damage. So what we need to do is add an extra object to our enemy to say this is the head. So before we do that we need to rearrange the size of this collider. So we need to shrink it a little bit to cover the body. So let's shrink. In fact I think the best thing to do if we want to do that is remove the zombie from there for now. Shrink the collider. So we'll bring it to probably about there, align it with the floor. Okay, so that looks like it should cover the head. And now let's bring the zombie back into the collider. And let's add, so right click, 3D object. Oops, not an empty one. 3D object. And I think we'll do this using a sphere. So it looks a bit mad down here, but if we move it upwards and shrink to the size we need, so let's try 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So it should encompass the entire head. So if we reduce the size, probably about 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0.25, move upwards a little bit and turn off mesh render. And we should be able to see it surrounds the head. So we need to shrink it inwards a little more. I'm not going to take too much time doing this. Obviously you guys can if you need to. Um, let's try point three, three points. Um, so I'll stick it with point two. Now obviously you can take as much time as you need to. I'm not going to waste a lot of time here, but get it just right with the head. And just make sure that the two, yep, that looks fine. So here's our main collider. Is our head collider you take the time to work it properly uh, let's right click and rename head collider now what we need to do is add a separate tag to this particular collider not the same as the zombie tag here so let's click down click add tag click plus and let's call it zombie head and then let's go back onto it and just click on the zombie head tag. So all we need to do now is work on the script which sends out that message to say take off uh, this amount of damage. So FPS controller, gun mechanics, and if we go on handgun damage, the best way we can actually work around this is to modify this script just a little bit. Now it starts off damage is five. So if we take that away, and create a new function. So function start. And the first thing we'll do is say damage amount equals uh, five. I will point out it uh, right here that yes, this is still JavaScript and uh, pretty much everything is gonna be in C-sharp from now on. So in a lot of these videos, I'm trying to leave the C-sharp equivalent. If anyone wants to leave the C-sharp equivalent in the comments, please do, and I shall pin them so they appear top comment. So what's gonna happen now is as soon as the script starts, it's gonna say damage amount is equal to five. Now there's only gonna be one scenario at this point where the damage amount is gonna be higher. So what we'll do, is right here where we've got shot.transform, take this line of code and cut it out. And what we need to do is put it after all these if statements here. So it is gonna be, you'll notice, at least in Mono Develop, if we click here where the open curly bracket is, it'll show us the equivalent closed curly bracket. It needs to go above that closed curly bracket. So just there. So what we need to do here is once the tag is a uh, name or rather it collides with tag zombie head we need to change damage amount to 10. so to do that what we'll do is if we copy this if statement here paste it below change the hit.transform to hit.collider and change the tag name to zombie head 
We still want to instantiate the blood, so we still want that to, uh, to appear on the zombie's head. But before we do that, we need to change damage amount to 10. Damage amount equals 10, semicolon. And then once we've sent that message to deduct the points, what we'll do is, uh, in fact, we'll just test this works and then we can kind of reset everything so um, you don't keep taking 10 off every time you shoot something. So let's save that, head back into Unity. Let's have a quick look at our zombie, just double check. We do, yep, yeah, it is still labeled the zombie head. Uh, we didn't add any uh, variables, so we should be all right there. So if we go ahead and play, and I will keep gun mechanics selected here so we can see the damage amount change. So let's go pick up a gun. And let's try and shoot our zombie in the head. Perfect. One single shot and it's gone. As opposed to still two shots in the body, which would obviously do less damage. So let's just make sure that still works. Two shots in the body, and he dies. So there's our headshot working just fine. But what we'll do is after we've sent the message to take off the damage amount, we'll reset damage amount back to five. Semicolon and save. So now, once again, what will happen is if we keep the gun mechanics selected, we'll be able to pick up everything we need to. And I don't think we'll even see a change in the damage amount because it should kind of do it and then reset. But obviously the zombie dies straight away. So perfect. So we can carry on with whatever we're doing. Shoot these spiders and the damage amount will stay as five. Okay, so cutscenes. Now cutscenes are kind of cool to work with and there's a couple of different ways you can do them. The easiest way to do them, obviously, is with multiple cameras. And what we're going to do is we'll set up a quick little cutscene to start our game in to say, let's pan around here, maybe, pan around somewhere else, just to have a quick glimpse of what the game looks like. And then we create a script to kind of create a sequence of events. So first things first, what I'm going to do is disable the FPS controller. So turn it off. Then game object, camera. I'm going to bring this camera uh, down here towards the spiders. So maybe somewhere here. And let's turn it this way and pan it down just a little. And we're going to do this using an animation. So let's head to our animations folder. Uh, right click, rename the camera. Let's call it um, cut cam one. And then Let's have our animation create and we'll just call it um, cut scene one anim. And then let's press the record button to start it. So we're on the first keyframe, so we need to set it as it is now. So let's just set the X rotation to nine, Y rotation to minus 27. That's our first keyframe. So by let's say the fifth second, I want the camera to have panned around this way a little. So what we'll do is 300th frame, and then let's rotate the camera to have looked over here. And that concludes the first section. So we can stop the record button there. And the next what I'll do is I'll have another camera inside here, and we'll just pan around this room as well. So game object camera and let's rename call it cut cam 2 same again let's create an animation for it and we'll just call it cut scene 2 anim so firstly let's set up what we want the camera to be looking at so let's bring it this way and let's just rotate it this way a little and now let's press record and let's set that first frame so let's have 24 and again by let's say the fifth second it's looking somewhere over here so 300th frame and let's rotate it to about there and then let's press the record button and what we're going to do now is turn off that cut cam 2 because we only want this cut cam 1 to start off with 
So we need to create a sequence of events for this game now to start up because if we press play now we should be able to see that first camera making its animation. We're also going to need to turn off the canvas because as you saw there there was the uh, all the UI that we created. So to do that what we'll do is click on canvas and turn that off. So let's go to our scripts folder and I'll tell you what let's right click create a new folder and let's have this cut scenes because there's going to be multiple cut scenes throughout the game so we're going to need different sequence of events. So right click create C sharp script uh, cut scene zero one and let's open this up in mono develop or visual studio let's get rid of void update because we don't need that and any notes because we don't need that either so the way we're going to do this is we're going to need a couple of variables obviously the two cameras we're going to need the player and we're also going to need the canvas so let's go public game object the player next public game object and we'll call it cam1 semicolon public game object cam2 and then finally public game object and we'll call this the ui semicolon so Although we're doing this in void start, the whole thing is going to be sequenced through an I enumerator because we're going to have to use a yield function. So let's start by creating that. I enumerator, and let's call it cut scene begin, open close bracket, open curly bracket. So what's going to happen is as soon as the game starts, we're just going to have that camera one doing its animation. So we're going to have to wait for up to five seconds so yield return new wait for seconds and I'm not going to wait for the whole five seconds I'm going to wait for four and a half seconds because that little extra at the end is, is kind of a buffer just just in case kind of so 4.5 f because it's a float semicolon so after 4.5 seconds what we'll do is we'll turn on cam 2 so cam to dot set active true semicolon and at the same point turn camera one off cam one dot set active false so then what we'll do is wait for another four and a half seconds so this is a total of nine seconds now so after that 4.5 seconds we'll put the player and the ui on the player dot set active true and the ui dot set active true and we'll also want to turn off cam2 so active false semicolon and save that script so obviously if you have more cameras the sequence of events would be waiting again waiting again until the sequence is complete what we need to do is start the code routine here in the void start. Start code routine and in brackets cut scene begin open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save. So now oh unexpected end of file okay so we've got to close the i enumerator there that's by fault. Resave and hopefully no errors perfect so game object create empty f2 let's call it cut scene object then drag and drop our cut scene script onto there and just set the variables so cut cam cut cam2 the player and the canvas which is the ui so now i'm going to save my project just in case and let's press play and have a look so you can see there this is our beginning cutscene and there we go notice our zombie making a little movement there that's something we can look at when we kind of <gasps> debug the game 
So, I want to quickly check if my headshot still works. Oh, perfect. Okay, so that's cutscenes. And obviously, like I say, if you've got more cameras working with your game, your sequence of events would go on and on and on. It's all about that sequence of events because these, this is what controls the entire cutscene. You could do it with one camera, just moving that camera around with multiple animations. But for a beginner, it's probably easier this way. Kind of helps you get your head around the uh, what happens, I should say. So theoretically, as I say, it might be easier and better on resources just to use one camera with multiple animations. But let's say it, it's easier to get your head around this way. Okay, so next episode, what I think we're going to look at is a mini map. Uh, we'll look at an extra building as well as further objectives because the idea of what I want to happen is over here where we've got all our spiders once we've got out of our area got the gun got the target we have to try and get through the spiders to maybe like a little hut over here where we have to do something else some further objectives we may also start looking at a skybox because it's pretty bleak at the moment isn't it we need to make it look a little bit better obviously more lighting comes into effect there so we'll have to look at lighting a little further as well so guys until that next episode you work on getting your headshots perfect you get your um cut scenes looking absolutely spot on and guys if you want to show me anything please leave links in the comments to your videos or pictures because i'd love to see what you guys are making so until that next episode guys thank you very much for watching